the Homework Use Podcast. We are so excited today. We have another bonus interview for you today. We are talking with Kristen Baker today, who is the director of Christmas at the Ranch, which is a new uh, Christmas uh, rom-com that's coming out. And Kristen, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks for, uh, for having me on. Yeah. So what we like to do in our interviews is we like to uh, learn uh, what was it that inspired you to become a director? At first when I was making like web series, I was my director because I could afford me as a producer. (laughs) Um, And so it was just sort of like, I thought at first it was more out of necessity. And then in 2000 and I think it was 2016, I took that year and I just produced and I allowed other people to direct things that I produced and I hated it. I really, really missed directing. And it was then that I realized my favorite thing is really working with actors and bringing out a performance and telling a story in that way. And when I had stepped away from that and I didn't have that, there was like this lacking that I felt creatively. And so ever since then, I have really considered myself more of a director, like I'm director first, um, then a producer, then a writer. And so that really helped me uh, realize that was my true passion. So it was almost like a lack one year of directing. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, no, I, that's the part that I love. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's interesting. Yeah. Was your education in, uh, in film? Um, well, sort of, it wasn't film specifically. The program that I went to was, uh, in middle Tennessee state university. And it was, it has a different, it has like, it's called like digital media arts now, but it was radio television production. And the focus was sort of the multi-cam, um, news show or, you know, anything that's like a talk show. That's Mm -hmm. what they had a lot of that equipment. Um, but I really wanted to, um, make film. And so I sort of uh, tailored the program. They had all the equipment that you needed um, to do that, but they didn't have sort of that like quintessential like film studies um, part of it. So that was sort of self-taught, but I could, you know, edit and I knew how to, you know, shoot with a camera and I, you know, did all the classes and all that, um, all that stuff. Now, growing up, were you a a film nerd? Did you, you know, watch um, a lot of movies and yeah. Yes, I was a total film nerd. Um, we would, when I was young, this is going to uh, age me, but when I was younger, um, my family had those big VHS camcorders. Oh, yeah. And so, like, we would get with the little kid, all the kids in the neighborhood, and we would shoot music videos and we would do Saturday Night Live parodies. And then I figured out that I could take two VCRs and put them on top of each other and like edit things. And I got something where I could put music over it. So I was one of those like geeky kids that was like, I mean, I played sports and everything, but like I was doing, I was in the theater programs. I was doing video, you know, goofy stuff. So yeah, I was always gathering people together to like play with, you know, the camera or put on a play. Mm -hmm. Were you always a big fan of rom-coms? Was that always something that you kind of uh, gravitated towards? No, I have come to love rom-coms later <laughs> in my life. Yeah, yeah, I didn't realize. I mean, I, you know, of course, like when you look at all some of your favorite movies, like Pretty Woman, you know, I loved that movie so much. And um, uh, was it Two Weeks Notice? You know, all this, you know, the Sandra bullock rom-coms. Um, but as far as directing, I mean, it was the first thing I directed was a feature length was a Uh rom-com um so yeah I really come to love this genre later (laughs) in my creative career and I now I just can't get enough of it yeah obviously (laughs) so you started uh telefilms and Mm -hmm. what has that been that experience like and what was kind of the catalyst to that whole venture yeah so I started telefilms um like over 12 years ago uh, back when Netflix was just starting to go digital and when Hulu was was just sort of starting to go digital and when Hulu um, started charging subscriptions. So we were, you know, early, early in the streaming service game. Um, and and it, we were out there because uh, it, there just, you know, wasn't enough um, queer female content being made. Uh, and 
it was, you know, few and far between. And I really wanted a place that someone could go where they knew they would get their stories and that we could also uh, pay um, queer female artists if they made content. Um, mm -hmm. It was a place to, to monetize as well. And, you know, Hollywood, I just still don't think is really caught up monetarily to, to telling our stories. So there's still a, a need for us um, to, to, be, to be out there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's really important to not only tell, I feel like we still are at the spot where most of the stories that we're getting are sort of steeped in some form of trauma. You know what I mean? Like yes. some part of negative. Yeah. And I, what I appreciate about what you all are doing is that it's, it's also joyful. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, I, I really enjoyed all of the, the films that you've done. And, and I say that not just because I'm interviewing you, but I literally have given fresh, fresh and Rotten tomatoes to both season of love and I hate new, new year's. So I've, I've enjoyed both of them quite a bit. And I, I think what you're doing is really, <clears throat> is really just such a adding such a joyous, happy experience to the world. I think it's great. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I I think this is potentially part of the evolution of storytelling for a community that that doesn't have as many stories that are out there. You right. know, if you look at at you know our our the the our straight brothers and sisters and friends um, who are telling stories, they've been telling stories, you know, for a hundred years. And so I do think the sort of fun getting more fun holiday rom com -y, cheesy goodness out there it's it's almost like you got to process the trauma first so like yeah. so many of our stories are the coming out stories or the my family doesn't accept me stories and i think it's really important so that you feel like you're not the only one going through this but i think in the eventuality of the storytelling genre you do need to get to a place where it's just that sort of fun. You don't have to think about it. Um, goodness, you don't have to process any any of those kinds of stories. So, I do think you need those at first. You know, as you're starting yeah. to tell the stories, you know, then then we can get to the stuff that's um, that's fun. You know, yeah. and um, and you know, I, I think it's yeah. So I think this is a, a natural evolution, and I am very very glad to be carrying the flag, uh, marching down the the holiday. A wonderful cheese fest that is um that's the holiday rom-com uh, yeah, yeah. genre <laughs> uh so when you did season of love so that was the first one uh yeah. what was that whole experience like that must have been overwhelming you know it, honestly it was like it was so magical mm -hmm. um I think the piece that was overwhelming was how is the community going to receive this? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be received and welcomed in the way that we intended to, which, which is again, that, you know, these are just stories that are for everyone that is part of the community. Um, you know, did we get enough diversity in here? Do people see themselves in it? So I think, um, that was the overwhelming piece of of that movie but the cast and crew that came together to make it um working with everyone that was absolutely magical and i am so heartened that a lot of the actors and actresses are still friends good friends today and still hang out and still see each other and still support one another and it's stuff like that that just makes my heart so happy mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a fun movie. I I enjoyed it. I liked all the different plot lines coming together, and uh, you know, it was charming. Yes, I think that's such that's a great word. It was charming, and 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 you all even did a um, a trailer reaction. Yeah, we uh, did to it, which was like just a, a huge for me um, to have to have you all do that. So yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, and then I hate New Year's. I think I I think it it's it was showed in even it was, I think the script was even better for I Hate New Year's. Mm -hmm. I think it was a little bit more sarcastic, a little more funny. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I really enjoyed it. And it was, uh, must've been great to have Dia Frampton on board, especially since there was music mm -hmm. involved. Yes. Oh, 
Yeah, Dia and Dia again is is an absolute joy to work with. makes a makes a fun little cameo appearance in uh, Christmas at the Ranch, um, and uh, yeah, she, she it was amazing to have her on board and to have her sing uh, all those original songs. Yeah, um, and so that was a that was a really fun uh, movie and experience as well. So mm-hmm. yeah, that one was that one was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always like the friends to lovers trope. That that's one of my favorites. It's a good trope, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. That mm-hmm. one is, that one, that one is fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then uh, we have Christmas at the ranch and yes. coming out this year. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. So Christmas at the ranch, you know, we uh, really follows another fun tropey um, holiday rom-com, which is city girl, goes home to, to her uh, family ranch, which is in trouble, um, and ends up, you know, of course, not liking Kate the ranch hand at first, they dislike each other, uh, and then, you know, naturally uh, fall in love and, uh, and have a, a lovely swoony kiss, kiss at mm-hmm. the end. Mm-hmm. So we hit, we hit a bunch of trophy fun goodness <laughs> in, 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 uh, in Christmas at the ranch, so. Yeah. So yeah, it was really fun. And I really particularly liked, uh, the social media influencer masonry. That yeah. was very funny. <laughs> that was good. She's great. Isn't yeah, she? Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. love that whole, uh, their, their, their date together. That was really funny. <laughs> yeah. Julie, uh, the writer that Julie Anton wrote that. And I remember the first time I was reading it, I was laughing out loud at that scene. And I thought, you have got to be kidding me. Like, this is hysterical. And I knew exactly who that character was the minute she like opened her mouth. I was like, oh, yes, this yeah. is this is fun. This is fantastic. And then, you know, the fact that she comes back around, I think is just yeah. also like wickedly fantastic. Yeah, that was a good Sorry, callback. I know. She, should I do spoiler spoilers? I think we're okay. <laughs> Something like that is fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That cool. was fun. And I mean, it must have been pretty exciting to have Lindsay Wagner on board. I mean, yeah. that was overwhelming. Hello. That was was absolutely overwhelming. The first time I talked to her on the phone, because you know, a lot of the cast um want, except for Laura, who you know I knew from season of love, all wanted before they said yes, they wanted to talk to me on the phone and make sure they, you know, we got a good vibe and I was like so nervous. My heart was beating fast and my hands were shaking. And uh, because yeah, it was Lindsay Wagner. You're like, it's the bionic woman. (laughs) The bionic woman. I just was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So it was, uh, yeah. And she could not be a more lovely, easy to talk to, fantastic person. So Mm -hmm. I was, I very quickly, thank goodness, uh, was able to get rid of my nerves and like, you know, be the cool, confident. Uh, yeah. director that I <laughs> that I needed to be but yeah that was uh whew, that yeah was, that was fantastically intimidating but wonderful well I really liked so the leads at uh, Amanda Rigetti and Laura Allen they they had a really fun meet cute where they're both kind of yeah, trying to like be that? I did yeah where they're both trying to be someone yeah. other than who they are which is classic rom-com and uh, right. that uh that was fun I enjoyed that Yes. Yeah. I think, you know, Rachel, you said something in one of the podcasts that, that I really want to just like highlight. And one of your previous, I think it was the, the, the one that you did when you covered um, the uh, uh, non-Hallmark holiday rom-coms. And you said with this genre, as long as you have a fun script and the characters have good chemistry, you know, that, that's what this genre is all about. Um, And you don't need like you know, you don't need all the money in the world, I think is, is, I'm paraphrasing you, but, and I, I really think they have such fun chemistry, uh, together, um, that, that sort of like box that you need to tick off is, you know, from, from their fantastic performance. And it, I think Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it starts right there when they're, they're, you know, they're very much not themselves, but it, it's very cute. 
Yeah. I mean, people groan at the, at the tropes sometimes, but the tropes are really key to making the films work because they help you be immediately invested in what's happening. You don't need, because mm-hmm. you have a limited time frame with these movies to make them work. Right. And so right. you have, so you immediately know, okay, this is a bad, bad man of business. I immediately know exactly what's going on. And then you can go right into the story. So I, I, yeah, I agree with myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. the, the banter and no. the, uh, and is, is, is yeah. key and the chemistry. Yeah. You know. And I thought that was such a great, cause like right now, what I'm dealing with again is since my community doesn't know really they're not used to rom-coms like right. they're used to straight people rom-coms but like you throw a lesbian group in there and like I have so many comments on the trailer that's like well now I know how the movie ends and I'm like it's a rom-com y'all like <laughs> it's a holiday rom-com you know how all these end and so I just yeah. it always cracks me up when people are are just like well that trailer gave away the end and I'm like it's a it's a rom-com like <laughs> You they should all know the, have the with, same ending. They all have the same ending. If that's what a romantic comedy is. Right. Um, so I just always find that so funny. But I, I do yeah. think our community is sort of just getting used to the the goodness of tropes. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's I a think good there's a lot point. of bad tropes that our that our community has been uh, un- unfortunately uh, fall victim to. Mm-hmm. But I, I think we need to realize there are good tropes that are out yeah. there as well that does exactly what you say. I know where I am. I know who this is. Let's, let's go on the ride. Yeah. You know? That's a good point because that community has, hasn't seen themselves in those stories. And so right. it's not something that's like, Oh, I've seen this a million times before. No, literally they haven't. Yeah. No. Yeah. And yeah. I, and, and I think it's different when it's the straight community. Cause I think like one of the things that we got from season of love, I had so many people write to me or send me social media posts that said I see that there's a sick mother please tell me she doesn't die please tell me she doesn't die and I was like y'all it's a rom-com of course she doesn't die like of course she doesn't die but but that's what our community is used to someone in this movie is gonna die it's like nope it's a rom-com everyone (laughs) we all we all live and fall in love it's okay it's okay (laughs) you know yeah, I'm glad that makes me, I mean, it makes me happy that, that you have, I think it's a great thing that you've done to provide this for people so that they can have the joy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Joy. That's yeah. such a great word. Yeah. Yep. That's what it is. It's like, don't overthink this, everyone. Just sit back <laughs> and watch the pretty people you yeah. know, act on your TV. That's right. And uh, so I really enjoyed the whole scene with the, uh, the, like the cozy cottage scene where she's oh. stuck there. That was really I, fun. And I you. liked the fact that you kept it very like G rated, very wholesome. Uh, and, uh, it was just cute. It, I, that is, so that was, you know, in, in film terms, that was originally, I think like a 13 page section that we had to really get down to like 10 pages, which is still a a ton of pages. And so it was just sort of like, there's kind of like a joke among, you know, Lauren, Amanda. And I was like, all right, everyone, we're going to be in this tight space for a really long time. So, um, and, and we were, and, uh, you know, and it was during COVID. So we were were all like masked up and, you know, face shields and just, you know, trying to distance as much as we could, but there's only so much you can in that space. So, yeah, that was um, that was that was super fun, and that's one of the things too. When whenever someone's like, "Oh, now I know this movie," I was like, "You don't," because there's the cutest cabin scene that's not anywhere in there that I just think people are gonna. I I I I'm yes, I'm so glad you mentioned it because. It's just a super fun scene. Yeah, I love that scene. It was, and then they're like fighting over where to, you know, where to sleep, and and uh, yeah. and then I I really thought it was funny when her brother comes in in the morning. He's like, breakfast. Yeah. That was good. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was that was fun with the snow machine outside. You know, yeah. <laughs> spray in the snow. Yeah. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. Cozy up with A Very Bavarian Christmas, a delightful Christmas novel by Katie M. Reed. 
Holly Noel Brigham is trapped back in her hometown personalizing ornaments at the mile long Christmas store, and she doesn't even like Christmas. As Holly works through fractured relationships and embarrassing misunderstandings, she stumbles upon love in the Bavarian themed town from which she tried to distance herself. Best selling author Crystal Payne says this about a very Bavarian Christmas. If you're looking for a holiday themed read that will warm your heart, but also make you think this is the perfect pick. The storyline and characters draw you in from the get go, and you'll find yourself relating to their struggles and cheering for their victories. Available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook. Pick up A Very Bavarian Christmas for yourself and the Hallmark fans on your list at a very Bavarian Christmas.com. That's a very Bavarian Christmas.com. You filmed this in uh, Canada or where was it filmed? No, in? we filmed it in Nashville. We filmed it um, oh. outside of Nashville, Tennessee. And we actually had a snowstorm that hit. Um, the day we ended filming, it started that night. So the snow scenes that you see where the ranch and the house are covered in snow were actual scenes. Oh, that's um, nice. That, that we had. So that was amazing. So you actually filmed it in cold weather. Yes. Uh, if you um, see the, the, when the horse, there's like in the opening, the horse breeds, you can see like uh, the voice, the, the not, you know, mm-hmm. uh, what's it called when it comes, the, and it's Perspiration, real. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah that comes out like so anytime you see that like we were freezing our tuchuses off out there which I know is the opposite of some um shoots in in the holiday rom-com where they shoot in the summer and they're trying to pretend like it's cold it's like nope we were really freezing <laughs> it was really very cold mm-hmm. yeah no because a lot of times it's in like August <laughs> in Vancouver exactly. yeah <laughs> Yes. Yeah. No, we shot in, um, in February, uh, early February, um, outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so do you find it's easier filming, uh, your own script when you've gone to, to write it than someone else's script? Yes. Yeah. I, I do because I think one of the things that happens is like, because so much of it is already in my head, there's not, a a ton of description that's usually in the script um just because I I already can can see it and I'm like okay I I got this so uh, you know as you're writing it you you tend to to see it in your head so I think it makes it makes your transition to filming it you know it's like no this is what I want this is what I see this is how I see it and so you know when I meet with my DP and we talk through the scenes um I usually have a at least on sometimes I'm like well let's just play around and see what happens but there are a lot of times where I'm like nope this is what this is and you just see it in your in your head Mm -hmm. yeah yeah well we're excited for the movie and I think everybody that's open to it will enjoy it and I we like to end our uh our interviews with some fun, silly questions. So we have oh, the Christmas it. edition yes. and oh, did you get this time? Fantastic. Yes. So what is your favorite holiday drink? Um, I got cocoa or eggnog or I think a, a hot toddy. Ah, oh, very good. Very good. I don't know if that's, is that holiday? Yeah. Um, oh yeah. That counts. I usually only drink it in the way I love a good hot toddy. Yeah. Okay. Good. What is your favorite holiday cookie or treat? Um, my mom during the holidays makes the most amazing cherry pie from scratch oh, where she mm. like, like rolls out, mixes the dough, rolls it out. And it is just magical. So that's my, that is my favorite, um, holiday. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite Christmas song or Carol? Um, I, for, you know, it's for some reason it's because we used it in season of love. I like deck the halls. Mm -hmm. I, anytime Mm -hmm. I can put deck the halls in a movie, I do. (laughs) Okay. Very good. Yeah. Uh, What is your favorite classic Christmas movie? You know, I don't know if it's, is Elf considered classic? Yeah. We just meant something. Or do I need to go older? I mean, I think you could go with Elf. You can do Elf. I think Elf is just so much fun. I think Buddy the Elf has he 
he's just so excited all yeah. the time. And, you know, and he's like, I, you know, I love, you know, he loves smiling and he's just like full <laughs> of Christmas joy and everything's a wonder. Yeah. And I just love that. So, I, you know, I think Elf is my favorite movie. It's a really, really funny script with a great performance. It's it, mm-hmm. all throughout, actually. Everybody plays it straight, which is what makes it work and makes it funny. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And I just, I love it when he, my favorite scene is, when outside, you know, there's like a rest of uh, the restaurant in New York and it said, you know, world's best coffee. And yeah, it's I love like that scene diner too. and he like busts open. He's like, congratulations, you know? And I'm just like, oh my God, to have that joy and sense of wonder and excitement is like, it's just a good- You reminder, did it. Like, you, know, <laughs> you did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. So which is your favorite, Scrooge or the Grinch? You know, here's the thing, Rachel, I'm going to say Scrooge. And that's because when I, the very first thing I ever directed was, um, I have a very large extended family and I Uh directed all of my cousins. I was 11. And so they were between the ages of like three and, you know, 10 and my uncle, who was a big ham and I directed, um, uh, a Christmas Carol. Oh, that's so cute with your whole and family. So they were always, oh yes. And so all, you know, and, and I would make my, you know, my dad and my uncle who were in the audience, I needed them to jump up and play like the two beggars who'd come to Scrooge's, <laughs> you know, to give them money. And then they would sit back down and enjoy the show. <laughs> so I would have, it was an audience participation yeah. kind of play, but that was the first thing I ever directed um and we actually still have it on VHS oh, and that's probably so only w- we would laugh at it but yeah it was it was really funny so 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 Scrooge for that reason I love that that is so cute that would be a cute <laughs> thing to do in a in a Christmas movies have like a, oh my gosh know. that yes yeah. you know what okay I'm filing that one away <laughs> Rachel and when you see it you're gonna know that was like that was you're like you know that would be funny and I'm like oh yeah that's it, it, it you're right I'm, make me executive I'm producer working, <laughs> yes I'm actually I will I'm working on a uh, another holiday rom-com called redneck Christmas that's okay. based on me bringing my girlfriend home for the first time to meet yeah. my extended family and my extended family runs the gamut of like you know they go deer hunting some yeah. of them barely graduated high school. Some of them are doctors. Like we just have everything, the everything. And it's, <laughs> it's a unique family that's in, you know, rural Virginia. Um, and they love me and they ended up loving my, my, uh, my partner. But, um, you know, it was, there's a, we have a lot of funny stories and, uh, yeah. oh, and that would good. be a great place. Yeah. That'd be a great place to put it in there. So thank you for that. That's, when I oh. I hop in, I'll write in that scene. <laughs> okay, good. All right. Which do you like better, clear lights or colored? Clear lights. I'm I'm a I'm a classic yeah. purist. Clear lights, yeah. Very good. Would you rather be in a snowball fight or build a snowman? A snowball fight. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you consider yourself a good gift wrapper or not? Oh, no. I mean, I really try hard (laughs) and I just can't ever seem to get the second fold to go up in a really lovely way. Yeah, I can I can get the the pushing. I do the pushing the (laughs) in and the folding down that second fold up. Just I just can't. That's when it all falls apart. Yeah. So I wish. (laughs) Last question. Do you have an ugly Christmas sweater? I don't. Oh, I don't. You better get I one. I have a, I know I have an ugly Christmas beanie. Oh, nice. But I don't have an ugly Christmas sweater. <laughs> so I know if I went to one of those parties, I would have to, I would have to go and buy one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I have an ugly Christmas beanie that I'm not this one, obviously. Right. This is my Christmas at the ranch beanie. <laughs> not, not this one, but 
<laughs> you're like all my sweaters are really great looking no no ugly sweaters they're just very plain it's not that they're great looking they're just a, a solid color like I'm just not a uh I'm not a pattern person I feel like <laughs> an ugly Christmas sweater needs like a like a tableau and a reindeer yeah. and a Christmas tree and a you know things <laughs> flying off and right. And I, yeah, so, but yeah, I, I have, you know, and I've never been invited to an ugly Christmas sweater party. And uh, I think that's the, my problem. Yeah. I need to be invited to one of those. I, 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 asked, I mean, I asked listening. this question, but I don't really have an ugly Christmas sweater because they, they, I've never wanted one because they're so itchy, they're so scratchy. I wouldn't want to wear it. Oh <laughs> yeah. Cause it, I mean, it's got all the thing, right? It's yeah. Got the, yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I, you made me feel much better about not having <laughs> So, so thank you for that. <laughs> well, you are a delight. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Yeah, this was you. really fun. And I, uh, listen, I'm a huge fan of what y'all do. I, I uh, try and listen as, as much as I can in the holiday season, especially you've got great guests. I'm just honored to be um, among them. And thanks for supporting uh, and giving us a shout out because it's so important. I think you sort of lend us legitimacy of our our true place in 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 the holiday milieu if if you will so i i just want to thank you so much for that well you're very welcome and if people want to watch uh christmas at the ranch how how can they do that yeah so go to our website telethones.com and if you scroll all the way to the bottom or search christmas at the ranch in the search bar um you'll find where you can buy or rent it so it's um it's for pre-order right now and it comes out December 1st where you can rent it um, or buy it. And it'll be on all the major streamers or? No, just on Tello. Just oh, just on, on Tello. Tello okay. Year. Like, like, yeah, Season of Love was the same way. We, we mm. kept those both on Tello. I hate New Year's. You, If anyone wants to watch I Hate New Year's, you can find that on 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 all the streamers. It's okay. on VOD and Amazon and, and all that stuff. But yeah, we kept Christmas at the Ranch on Tello this year. Oh, so. great. Okay, great. Yeah, well, yeah. we'll have the uh, information for that in the description. So def definitely everybody check that out. And uh, thanks again. And we'll look forward to talking to you in the future about your upcoming films. Yes, <laughs> I would love that. Thank okay. you so much. Merry Christmas. Bye, -bye. Bye everyone. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I'd like to thank Kristen for coming on the podcast. It was so much fun to get to talk with her. I really loved hearing about her experiences. And so let us know what you think in the comment section. And uh, please uh, like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. If you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We so appreciate that. And uh, please follow me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. I would really appreciate that. And uh, check out the Patreon group and the merch store. We certainly appreciate all of that support. And uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye, everyone.